Carry and Tommy about to go off. Get comfy and enjoy this Carry and Tommy podcast. And while you're at it, why not grab a Capri Chop Top? Creamy vanilla, chocolate chips, and a smooth Capri chocolatey swirl. Find them in the supermarket ice cream freezer. Guaranteed not to last. Thank you for being a friend, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And if you threw a party, you invited everyone you knew. You would see the biggest step would be from me, and the card attached would say, Thank you for being a friend. And only Carrie Bickmore and Tommy Little. This is Carrie and Tommy. Yes, we are, and the great man is just running past us as we speak. Yes, Eddie. We are live all Arvo from Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre. You can jump online. We are mobilised. Ned's Uncomfortable Challenge dot com is where you need to go to donate, guys. A superhuman He's feat. Built differently, isn't he? Is underway. <laughs> Uh, we are seven days in now, over 940 kilometres run <laughs> and over half a million dollars already raised Woo! to help those affected by homelessness in this country. It is absolutely incredible. Yeah, this man's body is breaking down, but his mind mm. is not. He's built of special stuff. He's currently, uh, his feet are so badly blistered and swollen that he's gone up from a size 9.5 to a 12. Whoa. <laughs> Apparently, when he ran across the country, he went up to an oh. 11. So they had all these spare shoes for him in case he got to the 11. And now he's gone to 12. They had to run around and find someone working on this production to find who had a oh, pair of geez. size 12 shoes in the middle of the night <laughs> for him. Shoes. Who's got Pumas. Who's got pumas <laughs> big enough for Ned? He's got ulcers all through his mouth. He's hardly slept. I think the first yeah. four days he didn't sleep a wink. He had a couple of hours last night. It is just, I, I can't do normal life having because, slept. Yeah. I don't know how he's doing this. I pulled a muscle in my sleep the other night. <laughs> he hasn't slept and he's been running nonstop. I don't reckon I've run 940 kilometres in my life. <laughs> No. Yeah. I mean, to catch a bus, no. no. We have so many incredible people coming down today. Yep. We've got um, a great friend of Ned's, Hamish Blake, yes. uh, who is currently yes. doing some laps with uh, Ned himself. He'll be joining us as well. We've got Harry Garside, who's been down here over the last few weeks, well, last week, yes. giving him a pump up and doing some laps. I think he ran a full marathon with him one of the nights. Yes, Dylan Olcott is going to join us later in the show. We're also going to mm. hear from Ned's parents who are in attendance. Um, of course, if you want to watch, you can um, watch it all on TikTok Live and, of yes. course, Donating is the most important part of this. You can head to nedsuncomfortablechallenge.com and donate there. But this is your chance, Australia. We have a PA system that is pointed directly at the great man, the mulleted marvel as he runs. And if you want to give some words of support, 131060 is our number, and you can be a PA system straight to those beautiful ears. So uh, call up now and we'll get your, um, your messages to Ned directly next. Carrie and Tommy. We are live from Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre for Ned Brockman's 1,000-mile uh, run, guys. Which we don't want him to fall at his feet at all. No, we no, he's been moving, Ned. That was an interesting first song choice. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, on 131060, we do have a PA system set up here. You can give messages of support direct to Ned. And there's some beautiful people down here as well because um, we've got some gorgeous fireys, Hayden and Brendan here, um, our country's finest boys any words for Ned out on the track um yeah I just say keep putting one foot in front of the other um swing your arms and and you're absolutely crushing it mate keep going (laughs) are you an expert runner I do a I dabble in running. Uh, oh, yeah, a little, little bit of running. I dabble. Time. Yeah, I dabble. Yeah, yeah. To everyone. Like, like there's running and then there's... around the bend here. So Ooh. if there's anything you want to say, give it heaps right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good work, Netty. You're crushing it, mate. Keep going. <laughs> We're all so proud of you. On you, Ned. You're an absolute legend. Keep punching it out, lads. We're proud of you. Yes. Should Keep going. Go, should we go to Steph, who's on the line? Steph, what's your message for Ned? He's running past right now and he can hear you. Hey, Ned, I'd never run a day in my life. And then when I saw you do the run across the country, I realised we can do hard things. 
did my first half mara and i'm training for the mara now and genuinely when i'm on tough runs i listen to you on podcasts talking to people about your experience you're an absolute inspiration the whole country's behind you and we're so so proud of you thanks for making me move my button get out there he's giving you the big thumbs up he can hear that thank you steph that's good beautiful yeah. good on you we've got a young fellow here milo g'day milo hi uh milo how old are you um i'm 11. you're 11. what wise words do you want to say to ned um he is the biggest legend ever <laughs> he has inspired so many of us including me here today um and Milo, who inspires you more, Ned or your parents? <laughs> In what wise? <laughs> Let's go for running. Oh, Ned. Yeah, good. <laughs> You've taken up um, Ned's uncomfortable challenge. He wants people to step outside their comfort zone for 10 days and do something. What have you been doing? Um, for my challenge, I'm doing 10 kilometres every day for 10 days. That's Whoa. insane. Oh, my God. Wow. If you do want to donate to Uncomfortable Challenges, nedsuncomfortablechallenge.com is where you can go. Yes, as we said, it's just got over half a million dollars and we want to push that number as high as we possibly can to help some of the most vulnerable in this country. It is the uh, food that fuels him as he continues to run lap after lap after lap. We are underneath the flight path and we can hear a plane. <laughs> <laughs> um, the great man Hamish Blake joins us next. Gary and Tommy. Gary and Tommy, for your drive home this afternoon, we are live from Sydney Olympic Park for Ned's Uncomfortable Challenge, guys. And fresh off running some laps with the great man himself. He's one of his greatest supporters, Hamish Blake. Thank you, guys. Fre Thanks so much. Fre fresh <laughs> off the track? Get us an ice bath. <laughs> I don't know the No, you look like you've been you, in the it's, ice bath. It's dead off the track. I look like, a, I look like I'm in a wet T-shirt comp. White was the wrong colour promotional <laughs> T-shirt to wear for my... Look, some people are saying... 10 laps, but I think it was actually about 15. That you just did? Yeah. So you did what, 6Ks yeah. or something? Yeah, a yeah. quick six. So as I was running with Ned, I was like, well, because I just got here, I got here about an hour ago, I ran for about 40 minutes. Oh, <laughs> and I'm, I can tell you, not just about me, but do go to Hames Heroic 6K <laughs> if you want to donate, or Ned's Uncomfortable Challenge, you've got the choice. You were keeping pace. Yeah, which is so funny because, like, obviously if Ned's closing on 1,000 kilometres, like, we are day seven, mm. and... Like what that man's gone through, which you, I'm sure you guys are covering and we'll talk about later on the show. Like it is a, f a superhuman effort. But when I got here and he's like, get a ham, he's like, do you want to come for a lap? In the previous days I've been here, like he's just been in it so much. Like I wouldn't have done that. And there were just some times in the last three or four days where I've been at the track just to, just to let him know we're thinking of him and be here with his family and stuff and, and our mates. But it's, it's been, sometimes it's been like visiting someone in hospital where you're like, I don't know if they know that I'm here. But, and that's fine. I, yeah. But, you know, they're just in a yeah. such a dark, deep battle. But this, but today, we was like, man, do you want to come for a lap with the water? I was like, absolutely. <laughs> now, it's not about me. It's about what Ned's doing. But I literally just came from the physio because I have kneecap problems. And the physio goes, right. Like, like two hours ago, I was in the physio's office and he goes, okay, so today's day zero of an eight-week program to try and get rid of this, like, tendonitis in your knees. I was like, absolutely. He goes, okay, so running's out. Like, yeah. I was like, mate, I don't really run anyway. There's no chance. So don't, that's fine. And then <laughs> get in. It's like, do you want to do a lap, mate? Yep. <laughs> just ran out through the car keys to the side. And in my head, I'm like, oh, my God. This is, like... I've, I have a Garmin watch and you like, you know, if people that like do this kind of thing, they record their runs mm. and whatever. I was like, don't you dare start. <laughs> don't start. A, like, <laughs> don't start a workout. <laughs> we can watch you on strike. Don't start a workout. Your Just, physio you, follows you and goes, what do you mean? <laughs> you are here for one hundredth of a percent of Ned's run. Like, don't you dare log this as some sort of achievement. <laughs> but I was, so I didn't start it. And I said to him, I was like, what pace are we running, mate? Just if, are you, you know, his 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 Samsung machine is on, and he's like about a five minute forty k. I was like, that's really quick for me. Like that is, yeah. I run at six mm. minutes clock. Like I'm not a runner. I haven't. I don't run. But I'm like, I know that's fast. And you've been do, you have run nine hundred and something kilometers. You know how you said they're visiting someone in hospital. Yeah. You know that's what it feels like for us with right, right now. now. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you look good, mate. Yeah. You look okay. Yeah. You don't look like you're gonna. Yeah, yeah. You'll be out of here really yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah. no talk, solids. <laughs> did you talk to Ned while you were running? What did you talk? We did. About? We did. Um, I mean, it's so like like today is such a different day too. Like I think 
He hasn't slept for more than two hours before last night. Like, oh, well, across the whole five, across six the whole six, days. So yes. after day one, the, 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 you know, the plan as it does with something like this, like, I think it's really hard for people to get their head around. And I have a little bit because I've sort of been here and around the family as they're, they're kind of reacting to how Ned's feeling. Like day one, he's done 160 kilometres in about 16 hours. That's really fast. Flying. That's really fast, including that 16 hours includes sitting down, eating, going to the toilet. Like there's a lot of stuff you need to do in 16 hours. And then you're eight hours off your feet and he's just sleeping here in a room. But, you know, you un, you, you, you get all the tape off, you have a shower, you're like tending to all the wounds and, you know, <laughs> things are flaring up already and you're getting rubbed down. So he maybe slept for a few hours that night. And then after that night, then it was like, okay, I'm going to move for a lot longer. Like I'm going to do 20 kilometers, sorry, 20 hours and four hours resting so i would just be moving for 20 hours now at a lower pace to try and eat up that what every day's you know re- gonna, requisite gonna kilometers up yep. and then from that in four hours again your, your body then he's done 320 kilometers in two days he's so wide oh my God. doesn't sleep gets back up does another 160 so then you've done 400 kilometers and and you're only you know, he might grab half an hour on the massage table as he falls asleep or whatever. So it's that stuff that I think has been really hard. The sleep dip and he's vomiting every time he's eating food and certain foods are working and certain ones aren't. So your body is just like we're watching a man like completely push the human body well past what anyone has done that I can think of voluntarily. And like, he still looks better than you. And he still looks better than me after <laughs> six kilometers. But that's the thing. So to get here today and to know, like I wasn't here yesterday and I was like, mate, I know, I know he'll never give up because I know who he is. But I was like, to see him though, moving that quick. Yeah. And so the last time he got about five hours sleep. And so to see him moving this on this pace, yeah. to be this determined, yeah. to have a twinkle in his eye. Oh my Hamish God. Blake, our, our human puddle, um, <laughs> we have heard a little into uh, Ned's body and how, how it's kind of um, going, but we, we want to knuckle down a bit more into Let's, it next. Can yeah. you stick around? Yeah, I'll grab a chucky milk and recover. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie and Tommy. Carrie and Tommy, we are live from Sydney Olympic Park for Ned's Uncomfortable Challenge, and we are still joined by Hamish Blake, who's fresh off the track from doing some laps with Ned himself. Well, I was going to ask him, do you consider, like when you were just running then, are you trying to distract him with other stuff? or are you Yeah, we're to, talking, I was yeah. talking about golf trips with yeah, yeah, coming yeah, yeah, up yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. just random other things, yeah. things that people have said. And, and also just to listen a bit too, because he's had so much time to process this. And you know what, you know what he said to me that really, I don't think he'll... I don't think this is speaking out of school. But when you compare it to the run across Australia, that was 46 days and around 100 k's a day. He was like, that was so fun, which is a crazy thing for mortals to think of. He's like, but you can do 100 k's in 14 hours. He's like, so at the end of the day, there's time. You can journal. You can, like, process what's happened. And you sleep every night. Like, you're on a schedule. But here he might be sleeping between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Then he's awake or he's snatching like one hour at 1am and, and there's no day and night, there's no time. And so what he said to me, he turned around, he was like, mate, I said, you know, you're running 60% more every day than you did when you ran across Australia. How much harder is it? He's like 40 times harder yeah, because right. there's no fun. All, like I've had oh. to get rid of anything that's fun. I've had to jettison the fun part. I don't get to ha- I, I like... There's no social aspect. There's no team sitting around having dinner. I don't have the time. I'm, I'm, I've got to get it done. And I can't. I, he's, he gave up his phone after day three. He's like, I can't do it. Like, he has, like some, can someone else do the socials and stuff? Because just, I've just run out of time. I mean, even to the do track, anything. the landscape's not changed. That's it. He's like, yeah, oh, I get no, you're not running through it towns. It would send me absolutely mental. So, like. And I know when people hear this, they go, well, then what? You know, why are you? Like, they well, hear the natural. Why is? The, and, then, and then you go, well, I think that's the point. Like, that he's, the testament is, like, he's willing to do that. To, to, to show what's possible. Like the, the, the overarching goal here was like, I want to set out to see what's possible if you can, for, for this cause, for homelessness. And that's the point. Like that's on the billions of physical and emotional costs he's had to pay. Like I suppose like losing the fun parts is another one of those things on the fly. He realised that is the price of doing this. And so that's what I'll pay. He's just, I was saying before to his dad, I was like, I think it's basically just become the world championships of not giving up. And, 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 and there's a world champion out there. Yeah. And I said this to him, and I really mean it. I'm like, if two, if two million people had started on the start line, you'd still be the only man out there. Yeah, absolutely. The, the first thing I thought of when you said that you're not giving up, I give up 
before I've even started. So many things. I'm good at giving up before I'm, I begin. I'm actually really good at giving up. Well, maybe we could do a world championships for you, for the world championships of giving up. I'm never going to give up giving up. <laughs> Didn't you do a challenge where you put yourself through? That was the rowing one, wasn't it? The marathon. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's so, but it, this is the other thing too. I don't haven't said this to Ned yet, but I was like, there goes us ever being impressed by anything we ever do again or being able to complain about anything. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all out the window you, because it rewrites the rules. Didn't you get surgery after your marathon? So what did you do? You did a marathon on a roller. I did a marathon on a roller. This is quite a long time ago, but just, yeah, that was for the salvos. Row ho ho. I did it at Christmas. <laughs> Funny name. Pretty grim three hours. I was, <laughs> see, and I was trying to be to work, do a world record too there, but mine was a pretty lame world record. My, I was, well, it was not lame. It was an unfair world record because uh, in the indoor rowing, there's men's and women's light, medium and heavyweight. And I was trying to, as a heavyweight male, I was trying to break the women's lightweight indoor world record, which I did by a minute. Hero. Thank you. Only by a minute. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what I mean. That's a really rough thing to say. It's not, it's, that, it's not a lame record at all. For lightweight women, it's phenomenal. Yes. I just went in with a huge biomechanical bio advantage and still could just barely beat the this world. This is like when I beat a baby in an arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> it just and brag very, about it. Very impressive. <laughs> but didn't you then need surgery afterwards? Yes, I did. I did. What? 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 I just tore my hip from just. Doing, doing the same thing over and over again and also just not being good. But hold on, is that worth it? So there's a chance that Ned's going to have some full-on injuries post this. Yeah, although he's got Wolverine vibes a little bit. I remember after the Australian run, like, you know, like we'd still catch up. Like, say we had dinner like two weeks later and he's hobbling. And I remember back then going, this guy's never going to walk again. Like, that's the cost of running across Australia. And then, you know, six months later, he's bouncing around and then he's doing 100Ks again. And you've got to remember, he's 25. Oh, it's young, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes when he's not looking, I just try and grab a bit of his DNA. <laughs> yeah. Grab one of his scabs and see if I can go and clone like, it. Oh, you're trying to suck his neck around, <laughs> yeah. around the bend. Yeah. Just a bit, just a bit, mate. Jeez, your feet look swollen. You want to give us a nibble? Get rid of some of the fluid. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a blister nibble. Don't mind if I do. Oh, hashtag blister nibble is not where we thought it would end up. Well, but thank you for all the support that you're offering. Mate, I just want to say to, from Ned too, like the other thing we talk about, he can feel it so much and, and, and it's no joke. Like it makes it's why he is out here. He's doing it because he cares so passionately about this cause. He cares about, he, and he he deeply cares. And I think this is so admirable. He deeply cares about the example he's trying to set, and especially the kids too. That really moves him. Like to see little kids like see the example, and and it, again, it's like I find that quite remarkable for a twenty five year old who's not a parent to care to yeah, to, to be, be so like literally. He's dying out there because he cares so much about setting an example for younger kids and, and what you can do. So, you know, that's, that's, I think that's phenomenal. And, like, whatever the maths is of, of however far there is to go, I know he'll get to 1,600 Ks. And, and I just think it, it is just it's a, it's a phenomenal effort because it's it, – it, I think there's people that sort of saw this and he's stepping up and he's going, I'm going to try and go for the world record. Maybe people hear that and be like, oh, this guy thinks he's the best. It's, I, which I can understand if people have gone, oh, that's what someone must think if they're going for the world record. It's the exact opposite with Ned. I think he's a guy that stepped up and gone, well, I could just say I'm going to run for as far as I can or I'm just going to say I'm going to run for a 1,000 miles and see how long it takes me. But if I pick a mark that is daunting, then, then I'm going to see how I can go as someone that isn't the best. I'm going to see what it, what it would be like for a human being to push themselves that far. Yeah. And well, that's, that's the phenomenal it's thing. Incredible. It's incredible. Go to nedsuncomfortablechallenge.com. Our donations are over half a million dollars. Yep. He's going for 10 million. Get on he's, board now. And, Come down and watch him. Give him that support in person. And the thing is, too, you can choose to. What I love about the Uncomfortable Challenge is, too, in 10 days' time, or I think it's, is it the, or oh, you'd have the dates, 19th to 29th? 20th to the 30th? 19th to 29th. There we go. <laughs> Good home. Well, I'm, anyway, I'm just, I'm a friend. I'm not an ambassador. 20th to the 29th. Okay, 20th to 29th. <laughs> <laughs> that is 10 days. But the cool thing is, you know, pick your own thing, whatever it is. Yes. If you're, you know, run a kilometre. Get out of your company. Get in the ocean, yeah. whatever it is. Learn a language for 10 days. Do your hard thing and then raise your money in your own way. And, and I love too that Ned's like, he wants to, 
He wants other people to, you know, experience their own discomfort. Yeah, their own discomfort, yep. big or big or small. It's where whatever. growth happens. Relative to you, exactly, Tommy. And I know you're laughing because I just did a little bit of a spew burp. <laughs> well, my chocolate you milk. break down in front of <laughs> break down in front of my six kilometres. <laughs> I've never seen a man <laughs> lose more water and then top up with chalky milk. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> that's the same, I know. <laughs> my chalky <jockey> boy. <laughs> Thanks, Hay. No, thank you, guys. Gary and Tommy. Gary and Tommy. Gary and Tommy driving you home the Savo. Strong chips, Woo! make better nachos. You can try the new nachos from Old El Paso. They're perfectly designed to hold all your favourite toppings. Old El Paso, make some noise. And yes, make some noise for Ned Brockman as he cruises past us again. We are live from Sydney Olympic Park for Ned's uncomfortable challenge, guys. Yes, and the two people responsible for this insane yeah. man join us now. It's Ned's parents, Kylie and Ian. Welcome. Woo! Hello. Hello. First things first, we've just had word that Ned is now up to 570,000. Woo! That's yes. exciting. Well. How does that feel hearing that your son has done that? Yeah, it's amazing how um, proud. You're proud. Yeah, yeah. Of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> It is literally um, doing something ridiculous to change the lives of people in this country, the people that are most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Um, Who's more responsible of the stupid part, uh, so doing the the things, and who's more responsible for the the giving part and the changing the world? (laughs) I think she's both. (laughs) Correct answer, dear. Correct answer. (laughs) No. No, I'll give you the compassion. (laughs) <laughs> we have heard, Kylie, that you are you are a tough nut from the moment that Ned, we've spoken before about um, what Ned was like as a kid, but for people that don't know, what was some of the links that you pushed Ned to, or he pushed himself to, but you kept him going when he was a kid? I think I did that to all my children, <laughs> but... Um... There was oh, one run back from well, Woolies any, or something, and, wasn't oh. there? <laughs> <laughs> he, he decided to run to Woolies. And... Which was how far? 60 kilometres? Well, he wanted to run 60k (laughs) in a certain time. Uh, And so we got to... He took went from our house to Forbes, which is roughly that. And it's about 55 to 7 from our house to town. And so there's a little bit more to do once you get in there. Very, very unprepared uh, in a pair of football shorts. How old would he have been at that time? Uh, well, it was 2020, so it was just before. It was in uh, COVID. Right. So just before he then went on to do the 50 and 50. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, yeah, he got – he sort of said, oh, I'll probably need you to help me because we hadn't got any supplies. I, went, I He said, I think I might run to town on Tuesday. And I said, okay, and this was Saturday. And I said, well, we'll go in on Monday and get some, some food. What do you want me to cook you or make you to do this? Because I'd never crewed any kind of racing before. And so he, he said, oh, it, yeah, we'll go and get some food. That's a great idea. And then Sunday night he said, I think I'm going to do it tomorrow. Oh. Well, I don't have anything. Do you, what do you want? He said, I've got, you've got some lollies there. That'll do. <laughs> so he took off at 4.30. There he goes, fast again. Just like that. Took off at 4.30 and um, rang me because I said, you should probably take some toilet paper. <laughs> and he said... Um, no, I'll be right. You bring it to me at whatever. But then I got a phone call not long after he left. So I went that time, went back home, and then he rang me and said, I'd like some water. And so I went up and took him water and he ate a few sour, sour patch yep. um, and babies. And then by the time he got to town, he was pretty dehydrated. <laughs> um, I didn't just realise <laughs> it was really hot. It had gotten hot, sort of. Um, the sun, he left the trees, so it got quite yeah, hot. Right. And he was cresting the hill to go into um, town when I got there. And that's when he burst into tears because I think it was pretty much spent. But he kept going until he got to the edge of town, ran through um, near the lake. And as he came out of that, I was parked, ready to follow him for the last... Well, there might have been 5K to go. And, yeah, he said, I think I'm done. I'm done. And did this, and I, I, you know, to his neck. And I'm like... I sort of had the window down a little bit and I said, really? Are you really done? Like, it's not 60K. And that's what he said you wanted to do. And he said... Motherly love. And just kept running. 
the, well, he, it wasn't a run by that stage. It was pretty. He'd sort of do these ones because he's very chafed, and oh. then he'd walk, and then he'd jog again. And anyway, he got it done. He was pretty happy. Wow. It's a, yeah, it's amazing. I, I can't imagine. I mentioned to you just before when we were off here, um, being here. I find it stressful and I had nothing to do with the birthing or raising of Ned. Um, how do you guys, what emotions do you feel here? Obviously you must feel proud, but are you kind of worried and anxious the whole time as well? Yeah, to a degree, but he's like, he's a tough nut. You've just <laughs> yeah. got to let him go. Um, I, I'd love to wrap him up and just take him home. Oh. Um, oh. <laughs> here I go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, he'll just keep going. He does it. <laughs> Excuse me. What makes you want to take him home, watching him in pain? Oh, just in pain. Yeah. So. Oh. Sorry, crowd. <laughs> no. What, can you talk to us about the pain he is in for people that have no sense of what he's been running now for seven days straight? Oh. Is, what, what's happening with his body? Well, I'm not the best one to ask, but um, look, it's it probably just the feet, um, you know, lack of sleep. It's just, you know, it's a general story from last time. It's the same deal, I suppose, from running across yeah. Australia till now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I don't know. What, what do you say? I mean, I enjoy it. There's no two ways about that. It's, it's fun. It's, I do not. Uh, <laughs> I do not enjoy it. Well, I mean, what do you say? It's, it, uh. it's the thing that he wants to do. That It's out of our comfort zone. So what do you, you say you don't enjoy it, Carly? What roles do both of you play in helping Ned achieve this? What, what parts do you play? <laughs> Kylie's 100%. Um, no, 99.9, I'll just go and clean the dishes or, or we, we check on the toilets. Or... You're the milkman. He drove. I've got a, yeah, I've got the other job this year. Um, he he oh, wants no. me to try and get on top of that game. I need to <laughs> it is all for an incredible cause. Um, what do you think is at the heart of this man that makes him do this front up time and time again? What, what is he made of that's different to all the rest of us that can't do this? I really don't know what it is that he's made of. I just know that I've always seen that in him, like from as a little person, that there was something unique about him. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm special for a better word, I, you know, to try for lack of a better word, I would say that. Yeah. But different is probably better. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he just is has always had compassion and empathy uh, and always been willing to champion fairness. That was that has been something that was definitely um, big on, on his list. Even, like, at school, even as a little person at primary school, that everyone's treated the same, that if he's going to get in trouble for something, then... If the, another kid does the same thing, they should get in trouble for that too. Yeah. And if he doesn't, then he really, really sees the injustice of that um, and did as a kid. So then high school, the same thing would happen. And he would, if he had an issue with that, he would then... All, I feel like all my kids have got um, the ability to voice that. And so he would do, voice that to teachers and it well, didn't always go down that well, you know. Like, So that would... <laughs> Maybe not making any friends. <laughs> uh, but people, he was very polarising. So yeah. people either really, really liked him or they didn't so much if he was prepared, to, if, it, if he'd challenged them. Yeah. It must be hard because having a slightly rebellious streak is often what separates um, people from being just as, like everyone else to actually really being able to make a difference in this life, which mm. also, as parents, must be stressful to watch. Yeah, it's a, it is hard. Because you want it to be a bit rebellious. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know that this is rebellious, but it's um, determined. Yeah, and, it is. It uh, is. Yeah, absolutely. Incredibly resilient. Yeah. yeah. It is incredibly uncomfortable to watch, but even yeah. more uncomfortable to complete for him. Um, if you want to get behind Ned, uncomfortablechallenge.com, yep. go online, donate. If you've just heard Kylie and Ian there and thought, imagine being Ned's parents, uh, go donate, get behind <laughs> them and him, help him raise so much money that he never has to put them through it ever again. <laughs> That'd be good. But he just doesn't know the word can't. <laughs> I can't do it. There's no such word. <laughs> Gary and Tommy. Yes, we are live from Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre for Ned's Uncomfortable Challenge, guys. And it has been a big arvo so far for us. I have never seen a man run in such pain. And no wonder. I mean, we're seven days in and it's been over four marathons 
every day. Every single Harry, day. Harry, you told us at the start that his normal shoe size is a nine and a half, but due to the swelling and, and the blisters on his feet, he's wearing a size 12 I just know. to his get around. I know. His body is breaking down, and it's breaking his spirit at times as mm. well. But this man does not stop. He doesn't have quitter in him. Absolutely. He's so extraordinary. But if you want to get a sense of how much he's hurting and how much he's angry at his body, um, not doing all the things he mm. wants it to do at any given time, this was Ned uh, in the wee hours of this morning at one of the toughest and lowest moments he's had so far during this run. It is Thursday morning. Um, I'm almost a week in. We hit the 500, we hit the 800k in five days. I had a bit of a capitulation. I could not sleep for about the whole entire time. Um, and now my feet have just gone, my knees are gone, everything's gone. Trying to find a way through this foot problem. Um, we're trying to work out alternatives now. And I will keep fighting till the bitter end. But right now, um, the pace has completely dropped off because I just can't even walk. Um, but this is much more important than this run. It's We're raising so much money for Mobilize. Um, I'm, yeah, devastated, but we, we're going to fight until the, until the very end. Um, it's feeling very, it's a lot right now, but we'll, we'll get it done. We'll get through it. Um, yeah. I know. It gets you right in the heart, doesn't it? Uh, if you it do is... want to jump on board and donate, nedsuncomfortablechallenge.com is where you can go. He's just coming past Great for another lap. Past again. He explained a little bit about the why there, why he would do something like this, and we'll uh, hear more about that next. Carrie and Tommy. Carrie and Tommy, we are driving you home live from Sydney Olympic Park for Ned's Uncomfortable Challenge. He's trying to do 1,000 miles in 10 days. And, guys, we do have to talk about our chalky milks because we were tucking into some of Ned's chalky milks before. And this month, 7-Eleven are doubling their donations from every Ned's milk sold at their stores to We Are Mobilise. So yes, good. We Are Mobilise, of course. That is where all the money Ned is raising uh, is going to, and it's helping young people or people affected by homelessness all all around this country. Uh, we are lucky enough to be joined by the founder of We Are Mobilise right now, Noah Yang. Noah, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Um, firstly, can you tell us how you guys work and how you help people experiencing hardship in this great country of ours? Sure. So we started very grassroots, like literally just handing out bags of bread to people that we were meeting um, and had thousands of conversations with people. We've got teams like Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra and Brisbane. Uh, and as we were having those conversations, we realised that there was a chance to really invest into the people's lives that we were meeting. But obviously, it's hard to get those resources. And Ned went for that incredible run in 2022 and put those resources into our hands. And so we thought, if this is going to happen, we've got an opportunity to try and do something really different and special. And so we've now set up some Australian First Direct Giving programs where we literally just provide funding directly to our participants. And that covers a range of different things. So we pay for single mothers' bills for an entire year. We get people into housing, mental health assessments, transport. But we basically just want to give people the opportunity to choose a life that they want, whatever that looks like. Go, Ned! Woo! Ned is just coming around Sydney Olympic Park for the one millionth time, I'm sure it feels like. <laughs> How did you get involved in Mobilise? Um, yeah, so that first night, yep. it was 2016. Um, and yeah, just myself and a mate, we just thought, there's people on the sides of the street, this doesn't make sense, but still at uni at the time as well. Like, is there anything we can actually do? Because yeah. it's such a big problem. Like, how can we actually help? And so called up a few organisations and then a bakery got back to us. Um, they gave us these big bags of bread and there's like a really funny photo of us. Um, we've got these like big black garbage bags. We sit down with the first person. We look inside. We've got no jam, no butter, no knife and just these massive loaves of bread. And so we handed it out and obviously the first person was like, we don't want this at all. And then the second person said the same thing, but they all said, come and sit down with us. They're like, it's not food we need, it's not money, but they talked about feeling like isolated and alone. So we thought, well, that's something we can all fix. Let's bring out some more mates. And it really just started from there, just seeking connection. I'm sure... Um is something that you've founded now has grown to be uh, massive and has changed lives all around the country. I'm sure there must be a difference in this starting with an idea and then getting to experience firsthand some of the changes and stories that you hear back. Can you tell us about just some of the people that you've helped over the journey? Yeah, for sure. And it's really interesting because at the start, a lot of the change was in mentality and mindset. Like some of those conversations, I remember 
we met someone who was evidently uh, like affected by alcohol at the time. And then a few months later, because we had such an incredible conversation, that actually came back to us, found us on the streets and mentioned that not only had he stopped drinking alcohol, but his brother was there, it was his younger brother. And he's like, because of my lead, he's also stopped drinking alcohol. Oh. And that was just from a conversation. But then now we've got obviously our direct giving programs. And it's the same type of thing where we're providing funding to people. But a really interesting story recently was we got someone into a house. There was an interior design makeover. Um, we did the makeover for her and we were walking the lady around the house and she just started crying in the living room and we were kind of like what's going wrong and then she just mentioned that this table represented the first chance for her and her children to eat at a table in years because they'd been eating oh. on the floor oh. and so it's like we're giving out items and resources but once again we're just kind of changing the mindset of people to believe that they belong in society and I think giving people that opportunity it's such a simple thing but it can be so impactful. What yeah. about for you watching Ned over the journey? You've got to know him over the years now. What's he like behind all this, behind the scenes? Describe him to us. He is just him, which I think is why people love him so much. He's just someone who knows who he wants to be, who knows what he wants to do and kind of knows the way that he likes to treat people. And I think that's really the most special part is, aside from all of that, is the way that he treats anyone and everyone, no matter who they are or whatever state of life they are. I think it's really special. Yes, Nettie. Um, if you have just heard Noah talk, then you think this is wonderful. I really want to help make a difference. Um, Ned's Uncomfortable Challenge dot com is where you can go and um, and donate, and all the money goes to the wonderful work that you guys are doing at, at We Are Mobilise. Um, Thirteen ten sixty is also our number. Uh, if you want to give us a call, we have a PA system live on the track here where Ned is running around, and you can uh, you can give a, a word of support. And he is absolutely hearing those messages when yes. they come through. But also, if you're taking part in Ned's Uncomfortable Challenge, which is getting yourself out of your comfort zone for 10 days from I think it's the 20th to the 29th of October. If you're planning on doing that, give us a call too on 13 10 60 and tell us what you're planning on doing. We heard from little Milo earlier uh, in the show. He's running 10 Ks yes. um, a day. It can be anything. Just step out of your comfort zone, pledge to do it and call us now and let us know what you're going to do. Noah Yang, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. Carrie and Tommy. Carrie and Tommy. Hey! Come on, Daddy. We are driving you home live from Sydney Olympic Park for Ned's Uncomfortable Challenge. He's trying to do 1,000 miles in 10 days, raising money for We Are Mobilised. Yeah, Ned Brockman just ran past us. The great news, we're at $580,000 as of a couple of seconds yeah. ago. Let's try and get to 600000 while we're on air today. Yes, Go to Ned's uncomfortablechallenge.com. If you're sitting there in your car, on your butts or at work, thinking, I should do more, yes, jump online. Yeah. You don't have to do the laps that Ned's doing. Absolutely. But you can add Absolutely make a difference. Any little bit counts. Well, one man who is doing a bit more is Adam, who joins us. G'day, Adam. G'day, how are you? Yes, very well. You've signed up to Ned's Uncomfortable Challenge? Of course, yeah. Yes, what are you doing? Uh, I was challenged by one thing on the website which says do 10% of what Ned's doing, so I'll be doing 16 kilometres a day for 10 days. Whoa. Oh my gosh, wow. What would you normally do a day? Uh, recently, I've been sitting about 50 kilometres per week, so more than doubling for the challenge. Wow. Yeah. Um, what got you into running? Uh, just wanting to improve overall physical health and yes. well-being. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just so have I think you always a bit been of a... fit? Have you always done stuff like this? No, no. no. Uh, at the beginning of last year, I couldn't really run a kilometre. Um, so I've, I've recently ran my first marathon. So it's been a big thing Oh, my thing God. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And what have you noticed in that time about yourself and about your, your For sure. Like yeah, it change. is so much more than just physical. Obviously, I'm a lot fitter now. But obviously you see it in Ned all the time. Being able to physically push yourself also is so mentally gratifying. To be able to show yourself that I can do hard things overflows past running. And that's been a really true narrative for me. Um, it's kind of, I would say it's improved most of my life, which Aww. is a big goal. Um, What's yeah. the greatest thing you've noticed at change? Oh, greatest thing. It sounds super corny, but just like... If you know you can do hard things, it really opens up your possibilities. Like, I can do anything. It's how I feel after I couldn't run a kilometre last year and I can run a marathon now. You know you can do anything, which is crazy. And you can see it right here. Yeah. And you've been coming down. Have you been down here every night? Super tragic. I've, I've been here every, every <laughs> night. Yeah. Stood at that fence oh, over there. Oh, because yeah. it's the first day it's open to the public. So you've been standing on the outside watching yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good on you, Adam. Every bit of support counts. We've heard from his support crew that he just knows that people are messaging in, calling in. We've got calls coming in now. Lauren, are you there? Yes, I'm here. We've got huge um, speakers that are heading out onto the track that Ned can hear. What do you want to say to Ned Brockman? 
Uh, I just wanted to say, Ned, you are honestly inspiring the whole nation. It's amazing seeing you do something so selfless for such a great cause. And to the moon, Ned! Woo! <laughs> to the moon. Uh, thank you, Lauren. Uh, g'day, Justin. G'day, boy. How are you? Yeah, very good. Hey, Ned's just about to run past. Have you got a message for him? Yeah, I want to say that me and my daughters appreciate everything you're doing and we want you to keep up the hard work. I'm a truck driver and since you've started after work, I take me and my two daughters and we go for a run. But when they give up, they ride their bikes just because we're proud of what you're doing. Oh, that's awesome. Good on you, Justin. He just gave you a wave. He heard that. Holly, one last message to Ned. Hi, well, hello everyone. Ned, I just want to say that we're not called to be perfect. We're just called to be unstoppable. You've got this, mate. Just keep on going. Oh, that's good. Bless you, Adam. Making me emotion. Bless you, Holly. Um, if you want to get involved, uh, we are mobilise is the uh, charity is going yep. to support. Sorry, I just got a little bit emotional there. Ned's, um, Ned's uncomfortablechallenge.com is where you can donate. As Carrie said, we are getting close to $600,000 to change the lives of those affected by hardship around our, our beautiful country. So get online and donate. Carrie and Tommy. We're live from Sydney Olympic Park for Ned Brockman's Uncomfortable Challenge. He is doing a 1,000 miles in 10 days is what he's aiming for. But guys, the Savo, we're doing it all thanks to new Cadbury Choc Tops. You can find them in the supermarket ice cream freezer. Delicious. While Ned runs around the track, uh, you could sit at home, Yum. watch a movie and treat yourself to a delicious Choc Top. That that could, feels, that's it's a very comfortable a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Double as an ice pack. Yeah. So Not delicious. Bad. We should give him a whole lot of them at the end. We he deserves should. Them. He's cruising <laughs> past us again. Yes. A man who... Um, Ran just a lazy marathon with Ned on the track the other night. Oh. The great Harry Garside joins us next. Gary and Tommy. Woo! We are live from Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre for Ned Brockman's 1,000 miles in 10 days. Yes, it is an insane effort. Over four marathons per day. He's been going for seven days now, mm. barely any sleep. He's raised nearly $600,000 to uh, We Are Mobilised to help young people or people experiencing homelessness around the country. Mm. You can donate now. Uh, He's an absolute champion. And another champion who's become buddies with him is Harry Garside, who is joining us now, Harry ran a marathon with Ned earlier this week just to give him some moral support. I just want to read you a bit of what, Harry, you wrote um, on your Instagram afterwards. You said, what I witnessed last night was truly something that will stay with me until the day I die. Ned Brockman is a once-in-a-century type man, someone who continuously shows up and forces himself into the closest thing you'll find to hell on earth. Never once did I hear this man complain, make excuses or look for a way out. He just put one foot in front of the other and got moving. The human potential is... Uh, swear word wild if we allow it to be <laughs> last night made me realize i have more to give and more to offer this world how well firstly welcome it's <laughs> so you. good to have you here how what day was it that you ran with him and how was that experience i think it was it was two nights ago and he gave me the call up to do the the graveyard shift so i, I arrived at 11 o'clock and pretty much started riding uh running bang on 11 and he just, he has no quit in him. Like I, I've been around professional athletes my whole entire life and I love being in that environment, but I don't like separating Ned and saying that he's something like, because I think every human is that, but I truly thought that night he's just, he's just something else. Like he's, a, that's why I said once in a century type man. Well, you like, said it was almost biblical what you watched. It's gen it generally felt like caveman. Like I felt like we were just like, like <laughs> genuine apes. Just like, <laughs> and, I, and I love that. Like I, I was just, just in awe of him the whole night. Never once did he complain. Never once did he did he sook. Never once did he look for a way out. He just put one foot in front of the other. I'm like having all this internal voices like, geez, I hope he wraps up soon. I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty sore, pretty keen to get home to bed. But he just keeps going. He How does long not did it stop. take you guys to do the marathon? I think it was about four and a bit hours. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, and you're just next to a guy like that. I can't complain. I can't say anything. I just have to <laughs> keep going. <laughs> like, I hope he wraps it up soon. It's <laughs> also a marathon for most people is the hardest thing they would do in their life. He did four that day. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I put up so sore the next day. I'm like, thank God you didn't ask me to run again. <laughs> and when was the last time you would have run that far? Oh, I did actually do the Sydney Marathon like a few weeks before. Okay, but between right. those two <laughs> marathons, yeah. So I do love to run. Okay. I can't complain too much. It's not like one of us getting out but, there and doing it. Yes. <laughs> when you say it makes you um, feel like you've got so much more to give, do you mean in terms of being an athlete, in terms of other aspects of your life? What initially when you were writing that post, what were you thinking? 
So I thought around, like a big quote that I live by, it's like, I think the opposite to depression is expression. And I thought when I was running next to Ned, it's just, this is for him the ultimate form of expression. And you don't have to run thousands of laps around an athletics track, but find that thing where you feel in your body and you feel yourself. And Ned, that's obviously running and, and a few other things maybe, but find that thing where you're expressing yourself to the world. And, and I think when you're living in that space, like that is, that is just, that's biblical, that is pure. And I, when I was just running next to Ned, I'm like, this is, we have so much more to offer. Find that place where you are giving your expression to the world because it's just lighting people up. Look at these people. I think it's only going to grow over the next, he's raising money for something that he truly believes in. Like this is going to be something special on Sunday and Monday. And so when you're running, so then say, let's say it's 1.30 in the morning then, you're halfway through the marathon, you're having all these thoughts in your mind. Are you two talking or are you both just thinking? Uh, it's, so, it's so interesting because I wasn't sure what state he was going to be. He was obviously quite deep into the run. And he, we got there and we and him have some deep chats about like energy and, and frequencies and stuff that not many people would understand, some real sort of hippie type stuff. And he was like holding those conversations with me early on in the run, but then the deeper he got in, Chuck the headphones in, there was no talking. <laughs> like, oh no, I better not say anything wrong here. <laughs> Did you listen to music while you were going around? I forgot my headphones. Oh, he had, yeah, he had like music he and had I didn't. Music. Yeah. I'm like, damn it. He was singing though sometimes. So we, he sang Hell's Bells. <laughs> We've seen through the TikTok live um, and through hearing Ned that there's been some pretty dark days over the last couple of, of days. His body, his feet going from a size nine and a half to a 12, blisters everywhere. For you as an athlete, does it resonate with you when you get to that spot that you've just got to dig in more than you've ever thought you had to dig in in your life? Can you? Does it take you back to a moment where you've had to similar situation yeah for sure david goggins speaks about it in his book and he says like he thinks most of the human population when they're exercising they get to about 20 percent, and that's when your body starts going oh maybe you're, you're, your leg's a bit sore or you're looking for a way out your ego is trying to protect you and i think athletes probably get to 50 60 70 percent maybe before they start hearing that voice but someone like a ned is genuinely like he's very close to 100 percent. like it generally seems like he has no quit in him and i definitely have three go, go neddy I definitely, throughout my athletic career, I've had to push myself in certain ways, but nothing compared to this. This is truly... What was the special. toughest moment you've had in your career? Ours is probably making weight. So, like, making weight, sitting in a sauna and losing, like, you mean, getting to, like, 5% of your body weight, like, as in 5% body fat, and, and trying to dehydrate yourself to the max and sitting in a sauna for, for hours on end, sleeping dehydrated. They're probably the, the darkest times that I go to as an athlete, but still, comparatively speaking, I think it doesn't even compare. Yeah. I feel like um, what separates athletes from the rest of the community is anything... Like, Any time I've had to do something remotely hard, I always think about, I can't wait till this is over. And what I'm going to eat afterwards, even even if I'm going to post, I just did this run, like how good that's going to feel. <laughs> um, do you think about the same thing or do you think about what it's going to feel like during? Uh, it's both. So obviously I think people like Ned and probably most high-performing athletes, like I, there is something sadistic in like really ramming yourself. Like I don't know about doing 100 miles around, 1,000 miles around a track, but <laughs> like there is something in really sort of pushing yourself and that feeling of like, have, we all have the voice telling us to quit, telling us to stop, telling us that maybe we've done enough and pushing through that and showing yourself that you have more to give. And you do that in a session. You can do that if you go for a long walk and you say you're going to do 5Ks, but instead you do 6. You can do that in now little talking. moments, right? Now you can do that talking. in little moments. Like, you don't have to be massive and do massive things like run a marathon. Like, you can do little things in your day where you push yourself just that little bit further and that will grow over time. How did you guys become friends? Uh, because we're psychotic. That's why, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> No, I think we, we who, met like who back made in, the first move. Uh, I think I think I did. Yeah, <laughs> I think I did. I sort of reached. Out. I think it was twenty 2020 twenty or twenty twenty one, just after the Tokyo Olympics. He just ran the fifty marathons in fifty days. And I was blown away. So we did a um, Rowan Browning, the, the uh, hundred meter sprinter. We had a sauna at his place. Us three, and we're just talking about athletic things. <laughs> <laughs> three athletes just sitting around, a bit like now. <laughs> oh, that's pretty rude to Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. Um, you are a champion, as mm. is Ned Brock Brockman. If you're listening to this and thinking, oh, my God, I want to do something, go to uh, nedsuncomfortablechallenge.com and donate. We're trying to get to 600000 just now while we're live on air. We're getting there. I think we're now at five, 585, something around there. So let's get it before 6 o'clock tonight. Yeah. We're trying to raise as much money as we can for We Are Mobilised. So get on board and do it now. Harry Garside, thank you very much. You're a great man. Thanks, guys. Let's go, Ned. Carrie and Tommy. Carrie and Tommy.
Gary and Tommy driving you home this afternoon. We are live from Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre. Ned Brockman's 1,000 miles in 10 days is what he's aiming for as he raises money for We Are Mobilised charity, guys. It is a superhuman effort that we are getting to witness down here. Um, as we see the great man, the mulleted marvel, hobble around, grab a drink, and then just keep on doing what he's doing, it's which is keep on keeping sight. on. Yeah, the sun's starting to get lower. Yes. And, and I was just thinking, you know, in an hour, we're going to head off and go home, and yet this man's going to stay here all night yes. and go round People can and follow round. along on TikTok as well. And They're round. streaming it live. They stream it live. We are just shy of 1,000 kilometres already run. Unbelievable. And With uh, $585,000 raised for We Are Mobilised. Get on now to Ned's uncomfortablechallenge.com. Let's try and get him to 600,000 by the end of our broadcast today. Yep, and uh, coming up in the next hour, we're going to talk to a man, as everyone here knows, um, Ned ran from one side of Australia to the other. And up in the next hour, we're going to talk to a man who ran from one side of America to the other oh. and has been following Ned's run um, from the other side of the world. That's all coming up. Gary and Tommy. We are down at Sydney's Olympic Park uh, here che- cheering Ned on yes. in his uncomfortable yes. challenge. Uh, he is doing so incredibly well. How many Ks has he done now? We are just shy of a 1,000 kilometres. Mm. My God. Pretty much non-stop. His body is breaking down, but in his ears is some incredible tunes getting him through, and we're mm. going to go through those tunes in a minute. But I do just want to say, if you're listening now and you're a fan mm. of Bluey, I don't reckon he's playing Bluey in his ears. But don't you reckon? No. It, it's but, some pretty broad territory he's covering. Absolutely. Well, maybe, but it certainly bl- like it blasts in my car absolutely. most days. I love the Bluey <laughs> thing song. I love Bluey full stop, and I love the fact that Bluey's world is coming to Brisbane. And guess what? We're going to send you and your family yeah. there. How good. Next week, we start playing. If you want the chance to go to Bluey's World, just go to carryandtommy.com.au. Oh, yes. there we go. That'd get you around the track, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. You can put Woo. your tickets to Bluey's World, <laughs> Brisbane, at bluey'sworld.com. But he does have, Ned does have a playlist that he runs to, and you yes. can go uh, listen to Ned's playlist on Spotify. Some of the tunes we're about to get on. It's a very eclectic mix. It's a real broad mix, yeah. <laughs> We've got I, Kylie I, Minogue in your eyes. Yeah. I assumed mine was just incorrect. The Climb, Miley Cyrus. Yep. Teenage Dream came there. But then over to the Killers. <laughs> yeah. And Mr. Brightside. Yeah, there's a bit going on. Untouched, the Veronica. If you have <laughs> four different generations in your car at the one time right now, I think there's something for everyone. So enjoy. Carrie and Tommy. Around Australia, it is Carrie Bigmore and Tommy Little for your drive home. We're live at Sydney Olympic Park for Ned's Uncomfortable Challenge, guys. Yes, the great man is on the track behind us. Um, but on the other side of the world, as he just goes past us again, on the other side of the world, a ultra marathon runner and uh, one of Ned's uh, big fans as well. Uh, this man ran from one side of the US to the other, no mean feat, and he joins us now, William Googe. G'day, Will. G'day. Thanks for having me. Mate, thanks for, um, thanks for joining us. Where in the world are you at the moment? I am in the middle of America. I'm in Moab in Utah. Yeah, right. And you have been tuning in um, in the middle of the night over there to watch Ned's progress? Yeah, unfortunately, it means I can't sleep. I wake up at like midnight and just start tuning in, and I've got it live now. So yeah, I'm 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 really enjoying the mundaneness of seeing this psycho run around the track all day, every day. It's great <laughs> watching um, people with similar mindsets to to you and doing insane things like you do. What what emotions do you go through? Do you think that's incredible? Do you get jealous? Do you want them to succeed? Tell us how, how it makes you feel. Kind of a bit of everything. There is a there is a slight jealousy there because I I love the fact of what he's in right now. I know kind of where his head's at. I'm I'm not likening anything I've done to this. This is super aggressive, and I can't ever imagine doing it. But yeah, there's a jealousy, but there's also like a there's a slight understanding from my side. Like I know other people in ultra running that will understand how I'm feeling. So I have have a maybe a deeper insight. So yeah, I'm I'm really willing him on and hoping for the best and. You know, these things, you can get stronger towards the end, so there's still a really good chance he's going to make it. You're a former rugby player. You ran across the US from LA to New York, 5,000 kilometres in 55 days. You've done like 48 marathons in 30 days. You're as nuts as he is, uh, William. What's the why for you? There's a why for Ned to raise money for um, homelessness. What was the why for you? Why did you start doing this kind of thing? Yeah, so for me, it was a personal tragedy. I lost my mum to cancer and 
how I dealt with it was I just went out running and I very quickly took it to an extreme. And like Ed, I was raising money for charity when I was doing these things. And it gave me a positive reinforcement on something that was, well, a very negative experience in my life. But it gave me something to do that was positive. So, yeah, that's why. Raising money um, to prevent people, hopefully in the future, from going through what you had to go through is obviously a wonderful cause. But what does it do when you're kind of deep in those distances of running? What happens in your own mind in terms of how does that help you deal with the grief? Does it at all? What do you do? Does it help you process things? It definitely does. Um, running became sort of my my meditation and my almost counsellor. But the deeper and darker it gets in these bigger challenges, the more I think about people going through life-threatening positions and I've chosen to put myself in that position and as a respect for who I'm saying I'm doing it for which is my mum and anyone out there fighting cancer um, I feel like I have no excuse but to carry on and I can see Ned does it for a higher power than himself so it's it's really cool to see and I'm I'm, I'm proud of what he's doing and has done already so yeah it's amazing. amazing. It takes a special person to do what you guys uh, do, a certain um, mental strength that not everybody has. What do you think sets Ned apart? Oh, God. I mean, he, aside from just being like such a happy-go-lucky guy and a guy that just rips in and puts it all out there, I don't know. I haven't personally met him. I'm just, I'm just a fan. I'm, I'm glad I can watch what he's doing and so can everyone else. But he's definitely got something deep, deep inside him that makes him push harder than a lot of other people will, and including myself. I'm just, I'm in awe of it, to be honest. Well, um, Ned is, uh, he's just gone in for a brief break, um, but we will make sure this... He can hear you now, I think. Is there anything you want to say (laughs) to Ned, who's about to hit the track again for another lap? Yeah, yeah, you mad dog. Uh, Keep keep cracking on, brother. It's so good to see. Use every bit of every bit of pain you've got, know that it's going to be over at some point and you're going to look back and just be, you already are proud, but you're going to keep going. You're going to be immensely proud of yourself. The world's watching, I'm watching and, you know, big love, keep cranking them out. We're getting a thumbs up. I think he has heard you. Thank you so much, William, for your time. That's amazing. Thanks for everything you do as well. And yeah, keep watching on TikTok and we'll all watch him get there. Will do. My pleasure. Have a good one, guys. Carrie and Tommy. Around Australia, if you drive home this afternoon, it is Carrie Bickmore and Tommy Little. We are live at Sydney Olympic Park for Ned's Uncomfortable Challenge, guys. Yes, we are in the presence of one of the great Australians, Mr. Ned Brockman, and another wonderful Australian joining us now. Uh, it's the one and only Dylan Alcock. G'day, Dylan. G'day, legends. I love, I love that you got a running expert on to talk about running. <laughs> 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 so get, good to have you here. We get to see you, uh, hear you on the phone, having seen you already this morning. Always lovely to see your beautiful, smiling face. Um, we were just hearing uh, what Ned's pump-up songs are that he runs to. In the mix was a bit of Katy Perry. Mm. It, was, it was the most eclectic running music. What are you trained to? Oh, I'm a bit more of a Wu-Tang Clan kind of gangster hip-hop kind of guy. But I do love that Ned updates every single day what his running track is. And he's got such a mix. He's got like Aussie rock, pop, love to see it. And, man, he's doing such a bloody awesome job. It's like I cannot stop looking at his socials. Like for any athlete, non-athlete, what he's going through right now is just, honestly, it's unbelievable. And if he gets this done, it'll be one of the greatest efforts that I've ever seen. I did comment on one of his photos. He said, I've got a pair of unused legs if he wants to borrow any of them, any of my body parts. He can have my calves, he can have my quads, my feet. They're all a good nick, so he can have anything he needs. I love being around you when you make comments like that because people don't know how to react. I remember yeah, when you, you, you showed the, you put up the video of you um, crowd surfing in your wheelchair and uh, you fell out and you you commented and you said, don't worry, I was no more disabled from this. And so then, yeah. people were like, oh, bro, I don't know how to react. Yeah, I said I didn't get any more disabled than I started. So I, I kept the same disability, uh, which was good. How's it looking out there? How's the vibe? It is beautiful out here. We've got lots of lovely people here. Uh, make some noise for Dylan Orcott so he believes me. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. It's mm. warming up a bit. Um, Ned's body is oh, the blisters, everything. I mean, if I, if I get a little blister after a night out, that's me done for the week. I'm in like slides. The fact that this man is running mm-hmm. on this body that is just torn apart is quite extraordinary 
And the, the, the biggest thing for, is the repeat efforts to be able to back up off pretty much no sleep when your body wants to shut down and then be able to do that again. From an athlete's perspective, it's hard enough playing a three-hour tennis match and then trying to do that. What he's doing, running 21 hours a day, every single day, it's honestly, it's unbelievable. And uh, I said it last time when he did the run across Australia, that man should be bloody Australian of the year. And I reckon he should be in the running again if he can get this done because he's not just breaking a world record. He's obviously doing it for such a great cause to, to raise money that, you know, for homeless people, that is a real thing of passion for him. It's hard to do something like this, but it's even harder to do it in the public eye and put yourself out there and set a challenge because you're telling everybody what you're going to do. And even though there's an excitement to that, you do have the weight of, of the nation on your shoulders, which is something you would experience when you're competing for our country. What what would Ned need right now? What do you need from people listening um, and watching this journey to keep you going? Oh, you see, you, you know, you both know this, you see the comments, right? You see people getting around you and they end up becoming tangible when that energy is so good. And one reason I, I love Ned and we've known each other for a while now, he puts things out to the world, right? And he might not make it, but he wants to make it. And I think the fact that he kind of put that pressure on himself, it drives him, right? It drives him to keep going and to try and get it done. And um, the fact that you know, it really, I can't open my social media without seeing not just his content, but people getting around to him. And he would feel that, he would see that, but not just him, everybody a part of his team, right? He's doing this with a big team and they're all equally as invested in all this. And I think another great way, and he said it himself this morning, just donate, please donate if you can, because it's going to a good cause. And, Hi, Ned. And he's loving it. I love you, Ned. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Dil, you mentioned um, that he's operating on almost no sleep. I have seen you operate on almost no sleep as both an athlete and also just as a party pig. Um, where do you put it? Put in bigger marathons in your life as an athlete or um, <laughs> when you're out? Oh, definitely after hours when I'm hanging out with you. What I will say, though, when I'm putting in a, book, a big stint, I'm sitting down the whole time. So I don't burn as much energy. So I've got a good excuse. Um, but, yeah, the, the, the fact that... You know, he's doing this off Meg's sleep, barely eating. I mean, I don't know how he's doing it. It's very impressive. Well, speaking of um, after hours, parting Ability Fest is on uh, very, very soon. Next weekend, yeah? It is, yeah. Our music festival where we make, you know, the site fully accessible for people with disability to come party with their everybody mates. It's on Saturday the 19th in Melbourne and October 26th in Brisbane. First time we're touring it, we got... Massive bands like Cub Sport, uh, Ocean Alley, uh, Keita Alexander, uh, King Stingray, they're all playing and 100% of the proceeds go to support young Australians with disability through the foundation. So, yeah, if anyone wants to come party, and I'll tell you what, one Ned Brockman, you have as many free tickets as you want, my brother, if you can make it. That's for sure after this. He actually might be as disabled as everyone else there by the end of this, so we'll see how he ends up. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're, and you you both have been there. It's such a special day to me. So please come down. Tickets are only 60 bucks, and come down and say good day. I know we'll all be there. And happy for anyone to come up and get a photo and things like that. It's such a beautiful energy. For tickets to this year's Ability Fest, head to abilityfest.com.au. It is the best time you will ever have. Um, Dylan Alcott, it's always a pleasure. Thank you, bro. Love you both. You can kick some ass, Ned. I love you, brother. Carry and Tommy. Carry and Tommy for your drive home. We are live from Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre. And don't forget, movie nights at home have just gotten so much better. New Cadbury Choc Tops, so good. They're guaranteed not to last. You can find them in the supermarket, ice cream freezer. But, guys, we he are here at Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre for Ned Brockman's 1,000 Miles in 10 Days uncomfortable challenge. And it has been so um, inspiring and slightly uncomfortable it to is, watch a man yes. in the most pain mm. uh, prove to the world that he is just simply phenomenal. I don't think I've ever seen a human uh, physical feat this this close before yeah. and it's amazing. Yes, uncomfortable seems like a bit of an understatement. It does. Yeah. But I, I guess if he called it Ned's bloody agonising, <laughs> yeah. gut-wrenchingly awful Pain. challenge. It wouldn't quite have the same ring to it. As Harry Garside said when he joined us earlier in the show, and you can catch all of that in the listener app if you want to hear it, it made him want to do more. And it does make you want to do more when you sit here and watch someone put themselves on the line like that. Ned's uncomfortable challenge. He's trying to get people over 10 days uh, to sign up and put their body on the line, do something that's out of your comfort zone. Um, 
following on from him, watching him do it. <laughs> Sorry, I've got something in my eye. I know. Making it, it's making it's, it quite uncomfortable. <laughs> it's making it quite uncomfortable to listen to as you just move the microphone further and Sorry. further away. From it's, your I don't know if it's a fly or I'm a like, hair or what. How many times is she going to keep going? But <laughs> anyway, it, this is what if it you want like. to Ned's comfortable. <laughs> Challenge. <laughs> if you want to sign up um, or just donate, we really want to get to 600000 by the end of this broadcast, which is now. So quick, do a last flurry. Yep. Go to nedsuncomfortablechallenge.com and get behind this man. He is doing uh, the unthinkable. Yeah. Follow Carrie Bigmore and Tommy Little on socials at Carrie Tommy Show. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Carrie and Tommy podcast. Next time you're winding down with a movie night, don't forget your new favourite frozen treat, Cadbury Chop Tops. So good, they're guaranteed not to last. Find them in the supermarket ice cream freezer.